Huh? Hey! Hey! Dunna, 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 dunna. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sumi Yoshizawa is much like Marie from Persona 4 Golden in that she was a character that was retroactively added to the definitive edition of her respective Persona game. And, just like Marie, Sumi proved to be pretty divisive within the Persona community for a number of reasons. Many loved her and many didn't, and, depending on who you ask, she's either one of the best inclusions to the story, or she was the biggest forced inclusion of Persona 5 Royale. Yo, what's up guys, it's Momoshiki the Janitor, and today we're going to be talking about Sumi Yoshizawa and whether or not her inclusion to the Persona 5 story was handled properly. So be very, very prepared for all of the Persona 5 Royale spoilers. If you're still running through this behemoth of a game or plan to beat it one day, then just be wary of that, because this is your spoiler warning. But for you sickos who like spoilers, or if you've already gotten through this 500 hour adventure, then welcome. Now, let's talk some Samire. So, the fact that you're watching this means that you probably have some base level knowledge of who Kasumi Yoshizawa is. Or, at the very least, you know that she's a new addition to the reimagined story for Persona 5 known as Persona 5 Royale. But, for those of you who are completely in the dark on Yoshizawa Sensei, or the role that this red-haired, ribbon-wearing, persona-using, stealth god, gymnast plays in the overall story, then here's a quick crash course for you. For starters, Kasumi is not her name. Rather, it's the name of her older sister who had died before the events of the game. Her real name is Samire Yoshizawa, but because of her previous trauma over witnessing her sister's passing, coupled with the survivor's guilt, Samire began going to therapy at her father's request and having one-on-one -on -one sessions with the soon-to-be Shujin Academy guidance counselor, Takuto Maruki. Don't forget that name, he's kind of important. Because of Maruki's guilts and insecurities, he convinced Samire that living out Kasumi's life in her place as a means of giving her sister her life back was the best solution for her. This also allowed for Samire to live what Maruki considers a normal school life, free from the burden of pain and loss. So for the majority of the game, Samire is operating under the guise of Kasumi, but not by choice, rather she truly believes that she is Kasumi Yoshizawa, in public and in private. Though, as Maruki tells us, this is only her perception. To everyone else on the outside, she is still Samire Yoshizawa. That is, except for one person, and that's Joker, due to a misunderstanding in their first interaction. So now ask yourself, what does this have to do with the overall story of Persona 5? The answer is nothing, isn't it? So if she has nothing to do with the major events of Persona 5, then how could her introduction to the story possibly be anything other than forced? Well, that leads me perfectly into the positives and negatives of Sumi's role and character and why she's pretty divisive among the community. I'm a pretty positive janitor, so let's start with what a lot of people like about Sumi's inclusion. She definitely gave a lot of y'all second thoughts on your waifus. You know who I'm talking about. You were ready to risk it all, sir. I was too, but this isn't about me. But seriously, one of Sumi's greatest strengths was also one of her greatest weaknesses in the story, and that's her relationship with Joker. And what I mean by that is that she's an infectious and outgoing foil to Joker's calm coolness and they play well off of each other. The problem is, in a game about choice and deciding the kind of relationships you form, at many times it felt as though she was screaming I'm the canon romance and a lot of people aren't a huge fan of that. Personally, I don't mind it because at the end of the day it's still your choice, plus I don't remember anyone complaining when Rise did the same thing in Persona 4. But for those who aren't a fan of Sumi or feel as though she's annoying or a Mary Sue, many complaints I don't agree with but have seen out there in the wild, or even if you don't wish to romance her, then I can understand where many of these scenes may come off as forcing her onto the player. But this leads me into my second thought, which is that while many felt as though she was forced into the story, many feel as though she wasn't given enough time in the overall game to develop despite chronologically being around since the Kamoshida arc. This all hinges on the big Kasumi reveal towards the end of the game. For the most part, Sumire and Kasumi, meaning Sumire Sharad, not her actual sister, are looked at as almost two separate characters, but honestly, it's impossible to talk about one without the other. For the most part, I've been referring to her as Sumi since it covers both names, but this persona that she adopted for herself <laughs> is completely detached from who Sumire is in reality. Eventually, she learns to metaphorically and physically, ugh tear off that mask and accepting and becoming true to herself, which is definitely the whole point of the Persona series post-Eternal Punishment. 
but the problem is that she spends so long as Kasumi that the player hardly knows Sumire. Her themes and inner struggles, while similar to Makoto, manage to be unique and unexpected. Her continuously trying to walk in someone else's shoes despite constantly being told to be herself is really a good setup and a great parallel to where she ends up eventually after meeting Maruki. And having Joker of all people guide her in her journey is great, but we don't really get that. At least not until the last 50 or so hours of the game. Honestly, she would have benefited from more screen time, more involvement, and most importantly, more slip-ups in her veil, which reveal the little cracks here and there a little earlier on, so that the reveal doesn't seem so contrived to the player as to how Joker just never even knew or learned of her real name. Plus, the player gets to feel a little clever for noticing the clues throughout the story. And on top of that, we get so much more of a microscope into Samire as a character on top of everything else we already know. Did somebody say involvement? Because, oh my gosh, it irks my soul that she never really gets to know the Phantom Thieves and vice versa. This one is pretty self-explanatory, and if you've played the game, you know exactly what I mean. Maybe my expectations were too high, but to me, it was almost as if she was hyped up to be one of the Phantom Thieves, or maybe someone who we would frequently interact with within the scope of the metaverse, given how the game starts. But she isn't really important to the Phantom Thievery at all, which is a bummer. She has no personal beef with Kamoshida. She doesn't know Madarame, Kanashiro definitely doesn't know Okumura, she isn't even there for Joker and Shido's palace, and the Akechi she meets is only a copy created by Maruki. The interactions that she has with the main group are pretty fun scenes, and I found myself always wanting her to just join the team, but it feels like the game is scared to get her involved. So much so that Joker is yanked away from his group on numerous occasions so that Sumi can pop in for a few minutes. And that's just a shame. <laughs> We need a Persona 5 Royale 2 where Sumi is the main protagonist or something, because I demand more Violet. Eternal Punishment style, except don't make her a silent protagonist. <laughs> that, was, that was terrible. As someone who loved the original P5 when it first released, Maruki's Palace was honestly my favorite section of the whole story. Whoever's idea it was to have a castle with Sumi, Joker, and Akechi acting as your starting team, I want you to know that I hate you and you're a genius. But the chemistry between those three and then throwing Maruki into the fold is just, it makes for some of the best writing and best storytelling in the entire game. I just wish we got more of that sprinkled and spread out throughout the whole game. This is such a major topic for me because I genuinely like Sumi and I recognize that she most certainly could have been implemented better in a number of areas. But forced is by no means the word I would use to describe her inclusion, since she isn't exactly shoved into a bunch of arcs that have nothing to do with her. Rather, she's only really truly present when the story is about her. And the stuff that is about her is done very, very well, in my opinion. But that all comes down to fan expectation. They expected Kasumi to be more, to do more. And with Persona 4 Golden on the PS Vita being my first experience, then maybe I should have curbed my expectations as well. But why do something like that when you can always expect better from these publishers? But I will say that what we did get was most certainly above and beyond. And to me personally, Samire is probably my second favorite character in the entire game behind Joker. Which is saying something given our favorite boy Akechi. And the fact that she managed to be able to do something like that with the amount of screen time that she has in comparison to the rest of the cast is just crazy to me. And that's because the writing on her is so focused and so good what it needs to be when the story is about her. But otherwise, she's nothing more than a cameo until the plot demands it. The only time that Sumi was, without a doubt, forced into the story was in Sai Nijima's palace, which Sure, she followed Joker into the metaverse and aided in his escape plan, but she certainly didn't need to, and they had to yada yada slash exposition dump after the fact to explain the whole situation. But forced inclusion? I can't reasonably say that she was. Rather, lacking is probably a better word to describe her inclusion into the story. And I think that's to her benefit, because as fans we wanted more out of her, and that shows that we actually liked her. Or at least the fans who wanted more out of her, others found her maybe annoying a little bit. For the most part, fans wanted more out of her. The ones that did like her felt as though there wasn't enough Sumire. Which is an achievement in and of itself. And it's just a shame that we didn't get that. But yeah, that's Yoshizawa Senpai. Did you guys enjoy the video? Did you? If you did, why not go ahead and smack that like button. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this all the time. We're going to be dropping Persona, Naruto, JoJo's content. 
maybe even some Kingdom Hearts? Also, how many of you guys are excited for Persona 3 Reloaded? How many of you have actually played Persona 3? How many of you even know that Persona 1 and 2 exist? This series is all over the place with their console releases. But hey, we're Persona fans, we like abuse, right? Right? But I'm genuinely curious about what you guys think about Sumi. Why don't you let me know down in the comments below? I am always happy to discuss things like this with you guys. You're awesome. Thanks for watching. Seriously, I do this for you. But that's the video. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm out. Holla!